the road reflected with Nicole Wakelin. Automotive from the lighter side. That means cars, but also cookies, coffee, and pie. Up first, what's Nicole behind the wheel of this week? I am behind the wheel of a super fun car this week, Russ. It is very colorful. Inside. Yes. Outside, it's white. Actually, with, outside white, yeah, it's, it's very It's white. Kind of, it, just, white with a little bit of black. Yeah. Bit but inside, it's like boom. Inside, it's boom. So <laughs> what's, the, what's this like? <laughs> boom. boom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I am driving the 2023 Honda Civic Type R. Which, with a spoiler for emphasis. Okay. It's like a wing. It's, I don't think it's <laughs> technically by rights. I don't think it's a spoiler. I think it's a wing, and it's okay. huge. Okay. Yeah. It is gigantic. It makes me feel like I'm driving the car that like some kid has souped up, and it never came with that. Yeah. But they put that on there, and other grown adults are looking at you going, you silly, silly boy. And I'm like, no, no, it came this way. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is how, this is how it, it comes. Came. More control it's, services than a Piper how, Cub. It's right. right. Yeah. Right. What did you say? More, more con- control services than a Piper Cub. Oh, my god. Here we go. There you go, engineering uh, man. That's right. That's that's fantastic. So the Civic was redesigned last year for 2022, yes. the overall, the Civic, but the Type R disappeared. Right. So, but ne- so the Type R is new on the platform that was new last year. Right. So it's new, but kind of. Um, so I love the Civic Type R. So the Civic is always kind of a fun car, right? This oh, is yeah. the kind of car that like kids like to soup up. Like I was saying, it's a sports spoilers. car. It's got a standard, you know, it's got, yeah, a manual transmission. Yeah, in right. fact, the type R is only a manual. You can't get as it as God intended, as God intended right. six speed manual. That is one of the most fantastic manual transmissions I've ever driven. It's, it's, it's just so smooth and so easy mm. and you get the hang of it so quickly. Cause you know how to drive a manual transmission. Oh yeah. Yeah. No problem. But everyone's I'm of that generation different. though, too. Like when half the cars were manual, we're still yeah. manuals. Right, and, right. and, but like, Everyone you get in the, it's a little bit different, the pressure points. So you're trying to figure out the clutch and you have that f- moment where the first couple of times you're like, whoops, that wasn't the smoothest start, you know, and then it takes a little time to get the hang of it. This one, it was like, oh, okay, good. Got it. Like took no effort whatsoever. Right. So I really enjoyed driving this. It's got 315 horsepower. It's no slouch. It, it moves. But the things that I like about this is this is a tiny little car and it, it's supposed to be a sports car and it looks it inside and out, outside, gigantic what seems like a necessary wing on the back. Yes. It looks fantastic. You've got bright red Brembo brake calipers, which also look fantastic. And even the Honda logo on there, the little H. Yeah. It's like a sil- silver. I want to say silver might be black, but the background in the logo is red and it says type R it's very on, red. in the grill. So there's, but then you open the door and, and it's all the red. Good gravy is this thing yes. red. And it isn't like, oh, I'm a nice muted maroon. Yeah. No, I am. It is like red, like candy apple, bright in your it face. It says, I am a sports vehicle. <laughs> I am a sports car. And in case you didn't know it, I'm <laughs> right. going to make it red. So right. everything about this. So the seatbelts, red. Yep. The seats, red. Yep. The carpet. Red. The floor mats. Red. Everything is red. Everything's red. There's red contrast stitching around it um, on different parts. It is, but it looks perfect. It does look really good. It, it does looks really look, perfect. It looks like, it, you know, you know exactly where they're going for. This exactly. Time. And I love how it looks. Um, it also has these sports seats and they call them suede effect sports seats. That's actually from the Monroney. I pulled it from okay. there. I did not Suede that effect. Up. It's not, it doesn't say ultra suede. It doesn't say Alcantara. It literally says suede effect suede in effect so nobody get on me for not using the right term that's exactly suede what they effect. call them okay. honda calls yeah. it that so it, it makes you think of alcantara suading it it even yeah. has like sort of like embossed i guess into it it says type r on the front of the seats yeah, like where the headrest is yeah. but when you look around the back it, the backs of the seats are plastic like it's kind of like a molded plastic mm-hmm. it actually says type r on the Boy, back the branding's the everywhere yeah, yeah. it's it's got the type r thing everywhere what's weird but also cool. There's no center armrest in the back. Nope. Instead, and so you have no cup holder, cup holders, but you do because it's actually built into the seat cushion. So in the oh, middle, in the back, I don't know if I noticed that. It's there's like seating for two, and where the center armrest would go floop and come down, there are two little arm, two little cup holders, which I actually oh, think I is kind of. I didn't cool. even catch that. It's cool. Yeah, I noticed yeah. that when I was when I was putting up videos. I'm like, check this out. This just mm. they're built right in. So that's kind of cool. There's one thing that both you and I sort of kind of didn't like. So these suede effect sport seats have mm. nice bolstering on the sides, which mm-hmm. is pretty heavy the way you'd expect yes. on a sporty little hot hatch, right? And if you were, I mean, you're six three, your broad shoulders. Did you yeah. find the sides, of the sport, like the seats, okay? The bolstering on the sides, like around your torso. On the swords sides, it was a little bit. Uh, 
cramp my style a little bit. It's a little tight for you. I want to say, I don't want to exaggerate this in any way, but I kind of feel like my kidneys were in my spleen <laughs> and you accelerate. It's kind of like squishing I everything in. I don't know if... if does anatomy an, work that an, way? Anatomically I speaking, like that's does. what it did. <laughs> but it squished you. Let's say it, that. It was very aggressively bolstered. Okay. So the sides I didn't find as annoying, but what I did find... Redonkulous. Yeah. Was what I'm going to call the butt bolstering. Oh, I didn't notice the butt bolstering. The butt much. bolstering. So on the no. sides, by your thighs, yeah, keeping yeah. your butt firmly planted. Yeah, see, as a guy, maybe it's not as annoying, but the back I bolstering. I don't know, oh but, goodness. well, and it was even though, so yeah. it's, it's snug on the sides, but it's very tall. Like, it's a tall edge. So right. when you get out of a car and it's on the sides, yep. you just lean forward and get out. But when it's on the bottom, you got to, like, swing your leg over it. Yeah. It's like, and then yeah. you're trying to scooch out, and the butt bolster is... Poking you in the butt. Or make it extra to... hard because you're so well bolstered. You know, you can't really lean at all, which yes. is good while you're which driving. Which is good when you're driving The only challenge is, I don't know if this car's doors open any wider than a normal vehicle, but it just feels <laughs> like, and I'm a tall guy with long arms, so I should be able to reach an open door. But yes. for some reason, I don't know if it's because I'm so low and I think I, I've it's been in a lot of low cars. I think it's because it's low. Or also because I'm so bolstered, I can't easily lean out. <laughs> But when the door is fully open, it's actually quite an effort to reach out, grab the handle, and close the door. It's not an effort of strength. It's literally an effort of geometry and distance. I think it's because <laughs> you're so low. I think you're so it low in the seats kind of, they sort of, in a good way when you're driving, sort of, you're sort of leaning back yeah. and you're like, you're, you're planted. You're, I mean, the good thing is you're, while you're driving, you're in that seat. You're yes. not going anywhere, you which not. is great. But everything until that moment is a little more awkward because of it. Yeah. So, yeah. But I do, they do look good. I mean, you open they the door to this great. car and, yeah. it, you know, everybody, I had at least a half a dozen random Just be aware, they're not family. quite as comfortable as they look. Yeah. They're not quite. But, but, but sports com- cars aren't about comfort. When you're driving, honest. when you're just sitting yeah. there, they're pretty good. Yeah, other yeah. than butt bolstering, I have issues with And this, the back the, bolstering, the back I'm telling bolstering. you, the kidneys and the spleen is not fun. When you're during high acceleration <laughs> moments, it's not great. You're making it sound like I was like driving with. It don't take a lot of acceleration to pull this off. You can no. just trust me. When you try this vehicle, I mean, it's wonderful i'm just saying you know you're in a heavily bolstered seat it was so much fun to drive it was awesome we have a loop we do on the highway that um comes up from uh you'll know it's like off exit so you come up at the speed limit but you can aggress you can aggressive hard you can accelerate hard yes because you go from like stoplight to 66 or 65 right quickly right so 66 you're inventing your own yeah well you know one man over who's gonna you know who's gonna okay i feel like they let me get away with that probably so you accelerate all the way up to highway speeds and it's this big looping turn and it's a fantastic way to see how a car feels in a corner because you yeah. are literally accelerating as you're getting on the highway and you do that i just kind of wanted to accelerate on to exit one get off at exit two accelerate on to exit one get off. Yes, i just wanted great. to do my own modified racetrack lap between one and exit two because yeah. it was just so much fun to drive and even the handling so there's drive modes there's a sport mode and a comfort mode you can feel the difference a little bit mm-hmm. um in that sport mode it's also it just feels it just ever so slightly if you toggle back and forth you can feel it kind of like hunker down it gets yeah, a little it gets bit a little more stance right so it's i don't know what i'd say stance well like uh, are you inventing the wrong words for yes the i'm inventing things because okay. i don't know car terminology but yeah, it gets a but little more firm. But you do know when you don't like to have your spleen squished into your I, kidney? You know, I don't know a lot, but I know that. <laughs> Kidneys and spleen is not really my default That isn't position. That isn't generally how it should no, go. No, no, um, no. You're, you're, otherwise, you're pretty good. Yeah, so, but I did, but it, it, you know, it's relatively comfortable up front. I do like that, although this is a hatchback, and I mentioned those two little cup holders in the back, you can sit in the back seat. So I pushed the front seat as far back mm-hmm. as it was go. Could you get so, three adults or four adults in here? Two. two. You can really, it's two. Yeah. Okay. So you can get two adults, four adults in the back. I don't know. I don't it does, it looks very tight. Exhibition. I'm just going to say. You can fit two adults <laughs> back there. It's not going to be something you'd want to do on a really long trip because no. there's enough leg room. It's not like your knees are going to be in your chin, yeah. but it is kind of snug headroom. I think you'd be okay back there, but it, yes. it's a short trip for four people. Yeah, um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, generally, I wouldn't take the car in a four person. Right. I don't think this is a road trip car. Trip. It's a road yeah. trip car. It's just you and a buddy. It's, it's not a great road trip, road trip car, car for, for two. Yes. If you're taking more than two, you need a different vehicle. Yes. Yeah. And it has a decent amount of cargo. And see, the thing with the hatchback is they look mm-hmm. deceptively small. Right. But this one, it has a 60-40 split folding rear seat. It has a good amount of room in the back. I mean, I looked at them like, you could actually put a couple pieces of carry-on luggage behind yeah. those rear seats without folding. And once you fold those seats down, you have a good amount of room back there. You really have plenty of room. So it's it's not a cargo hauler by any means. But it has more versatility, I think, than a lot of hatchbacks because you can really put people in the back seat, and you can really put some cargo in the in that hatchback if you want to carry stuff around. Can we talk about price? 
price it is. Uh, this one now there's a range of prices for the yeah. Civic. This one starts at um, or as equipped as it was in my driveway, forty four thousand three hundred and eighty five dollars, which is not bad at all. <laughs> Everyone, if you like what you're hearing, then go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe either on YouTube or your favorite podcatcher. Yeah. Yeah. So the other vehicle that I'm talking about is entirely different. Like these, when you look at these, it's like that was take your head out of fun, hot little hatch. That was spleen covered by kidneys situation. Right. This one will not mess your spleen or no, your kidneys No, this up. is much more like you can relax. Your kidneys can stay just where they're supposed to be. <laughs> so this is the 2023 Lexus RX 350 H Ooh. and the H makes it the hybrid. Mm. Um, so this starts at a chunk high. Well, actually not as much higher as you might think it's, it's at 56,000. So I mean, yeah, it's a lot higher, but like but for, Lexus yeah. and hybrid. So exactly. you got to pay more. Exactly. So this one is all new this year, which means they made little improvements all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, they're sort of like, nothing's quite the same. One of the things I like is they changed how the front looks. I am not a huge fan of the Lexus spindle grill. Yeah. It doesn't really shout to you it sort of depends on the vehicle because there's a range of vehicles from mm -hmm. suvs to mm -hmm. sedans that you can get for lexus and i feel like the sedans it's a little bit better on something big like an suv sometimes it feels like it's just gonna sort of <gasps> swallow you whole it's yeah. big but they've changed the style a little bit so i feel like it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and it works a little better so i like the way this looks. Did you like how the Lexus? I thought it did look RX nice. Looked? I did look. I did like the looks a lot. I thought it was a nice looking vehicle, and uh, it drove nice too. Yes, just being in the passenger seat. Yes, so I liked it. Um, I also like that there's um, two good rows of seating. You've got mm -hmm. plenty of room. The previous generation of the Lexus RX was actually a uh, either a two row or a three row. You could yeah. get it either way. Um, the third row in this, I mean, okay. You yeah. can put one back yeah, there, but that. it's not exactly easy to do as a third row because it's, it's, there's just, it's just not enough room. It really, it should be two rows and that's what they did. So I like that. I like that they did two rows of seating. I think that was the, the right call. I think it makes it a lot easier to, to live with because you have yeah. two rows of seating and then you have plenty of room for your cargo in the back. So I'm a fan of this overall. Um, and it's responsive. It has a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. And it's got 246 horsepower. Pretty good for a vehicle that's that size. That's pretty good yeah, for yeah. a vehicle this size. <clears throat> so when you mash on the gas, it it does move. You do feel like it's going. Right. You don't. It's not sluggish. And I think sometimes when you look at SUVs, especially hybrid vehicles, you're kind of thinking like, is it really going to move? Is it really going to feel like responsive? And it does. I do like this. I think this is a fun car to drive. And I feel like, you know, it's an SUV. It's a hybrid. Is it really fun? Yeah, it's fun. It doesn't have to be a Honda Civic Type R to be something Well, I think that's we're also fun. getting to a space now where the, the hybrids uh, have, you know, the electric motor situation makes them a lot more peppy. Yeah, they are yeah, peppier so than... They, there was a yeah. time, like, you had... Oh, my gosh. My old Honda you Civic had a Honda hybrid, Civic hybrid. One of the early gens. And it was... And it was, there was peppy was not a word I would have used with it. It was very efficient. Yeah. Especially for the time, which was great. But it was not... You know, you get on a hill... And the battery would run out and it would be like a little lawnmower engine going. Yes, yeah. it yeah. was a little bit like a little lawnmower engine going. And it was, <laughs> <laughs> I did not especially enjoy driving that one. No. But this one was fun. This but is like. This is not a problem. And you know what I will say? Yes. In addition to it handling well, looks really good. Got a nice amount of pickup. Uh, there's no extraneous timepieces, which I really appreciate. That is a pet peeve for you. I'm not a big fan of when there's like, and I know fancy cars like to put clocks in it. The, the Lexus are, and the high-end guys, they like to put like well, analog the, clocks the that are just not necessary. The more expensive the car, the more likely they are to try to shove an analog clock in it because like, oh, well, you've got this fancy right. clock in your dashboard. I get it. It's putting another piece of like fancy, expensive. It's not like Billy Bob's Money to say there's money us. in the car. It's like exactly. a Rolex or yeah. some really nah. fancy brand. But I always, I don't want clutter on my dashboard just for the Negative. sake of clutter. Yeah, we don't need that. I feel like you've bought an expensive car to begin with. People, okay, it's an expensive car. You don't need to prove it. I by can see the time in 50 clock. places already. I don't need that. <laughs> yeah. And this one, this has a... A uh, 14 inch infotainment touchscreen. It's really mm -hmm. big, which it I looks like. Lovely. Size of it looks lovely. It looks nice. Uh, and it has what they call it's Hey Lexus. So when you want the okay. car to do something, you can say to it, Hey Lexus, and it hears you. And I find that both Lexus and Toyota do it really well. Like some of them, you, you try to do the voice activated thing and it's just terrible. It just, they don't recognize you. You feel like you're enunciating, like, 
take me to Elm Street. And it's like, oh, taking you to Maple Avenue. You're like, that's not what I've said. <laughs> and you've enunciated as clearly as you can. I feel like with the Lexus system, you say, hey, Lexus, it's like, yeah, what do you want? Immediately, it gives you what you want. You Or it gets... It doesn't, when it doesn't hear you, you know why. Suddenly a giant tractor trailer has driven by you or you coughed halfway through what you're saying and it's like a cough is not a registered right. command. But it, I feel like it's good. And I think that's important because everyone's doing the hands-free thing. You want to be able to have cars that you can use that infotainment without having to touch the screen and cycle through things. And I think that the Lexus does it. I'm, I'm curious about this because all you automotive journalists, like you drive all these amazing cars and you try them in all these different venues. Yeah. Has anyone ever tried this? So now more and more of the, the OEMs, as you guys call them, the manufacturers, yes. yeah, right? They all have their own version of sort of like human voice interaction stuff. You got, hey, Lexus, you got, hey, Mercedes or whatever. Yeah. Uh, has anyone experimented with like, hey, vehicle that I'm currently in, uh, take me to the nearest restaurant. And have you ever observed if it chooses based on the class of vehicle it is. So like, <laughs> I feel like the Lexus should take you like a four or five star restaurant, but other cars should maybe should take you to Waffle House. So, you know, how does it make that minute, decision? What car would take you to a Waffle House? You need oh, to many vehicles should choose Waffle Who House. Who would take you to or a Waffle Denny's, House? Or Denny's. Who would take or you to Or McDonald's. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, prejudge. I'm just saying like, <laughs> maybe there's some people well, okay. thought about that. So then in a positive way, where would a Lexus take you? I feel like four or five stars. So like Lexus. a steak place, Lexus should take. Well, it should a look at restaurants only that place. are like in that you know Michelin star so zone. So Lexus should not be taking you to Waffle Ma- House. Lexus should not. The first choice should not be like Denny's, McDonald's, or Waffle House in a Lexus. I'm Denny's, just saying McDonald's or Waffle. I mean, it could, but it, but I feel like it shouldn't. Okay. You know, I, just, you know, I don't think I, it does that, but that's really funny. If it would, I feel like this is a review <laughs> opportunity for all of you, and if no one's done this yet, it should be something to see to if they are tailored. I mean, it would make sense. I don't know, though. I don't know, like. I think everybody really enjoys an In-N-Out burger, no matter whether you're driving a two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, maybe we could ask you: Would you care for fast food, or would you care for a Michelin star? So you want how many be, Michelin stars would you prefer? You want Zero to four to be more concierge and say like, yeah, I want it to. Be, I mean, if it's a Lexus, it should be yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, fine. I guess you know what I don't I'm think it does that, but that would do. be an interesting thing. Um, one of the things that I liked about this too, and I want to call this out because I mentioned the the. Um, what are they called? The suede. Now I forgot them. The ultra, the suede effect sports seats in Ooh, the yes. Civic. Yeah. This one has, and they're calling it again, ultra suede is what they're calling it. Um, they have ultra suede and the trim is on the doors and it's on the seats, but it's not just like a flat trim. It's still got that think like suede basically, yeah, right. but it has sort of like a pattern in it. And it has that same spot, Ooh, yeah, suede yeah, yeah. pattern thing on the door panels and it's on the front seats and it's on the back seats. I so you kind of have it like yeah, it all nice. the way through. Nice. I thought that was kind of neat. I like that. I thought that was a nice touch. So I think this is, I like this. The, one of the things that kind of threw me a little bit was the, um, uh, the heat and the AC. So it works beautifully. Yeah, That's what it's supposed to do. And a lot of cars now, they have it set. So like if you crank the heat to high, right. it assumes you're freezing to death and it will turn on your heated steering wheel and your heated seats. Yeah. This car is really aggressive about like, you must want to be cooled. You yes. can turn the AC on. And it was, I think, to be fair. Like Allow 90, me to set that to maximum. Right? But they turn on the ventilated seats. I do not like ventilated seats. And everyone tells me if I lived in Texas yeah. or Florida, I'd feel differently. But here's the thing. You turn on a heated seat and a heated steering wheel. You know what you hear? There's noise. Nothing. Heated. Oh, right. Yeah, nothing. the heated ones are quiet. Yes. Heated seats, heated steering yeah, wheel. Do you know they're this. on? Not until your nope. butt or your hands get right. warm. Ventilated seats? Yeah, it's like there's a humming. Before you know they're even on, you're like, why is there a small jet <laughs> right. engine in the back seat of my car? And then you realize it. You look, you see a little blue light somewhere and you think, oh, yeah. The ventilated seats are on. Yeah. I do not like them. I want them to be quiet. I feel like if we can engineer cars with cushy rides and all sorts of uh, things to redo- reduce, reduce noise, yeah. vibration and harshness and acoustic glass to keep the sounds outside the car. They're just a few generations car. behind computers. So ah. back in the day, right, in, in big rig computers, yeah. you had fans, which mm-hmm. were very noisy, cooling them. Yes. But today, high-end rigs are all liquid-cooled completely silent that's where we're going we just need liquid cooled seats like, why don't we have, are they too expensive i wonder I feel uh, they're like there pricier should be... and it probably a lot of liquid to cool a human so it's probably not efficient yeah well the that's a little weight to the car really water's not light 
Blowing the air on your butt isn't exactly efficient. No, I either. know. I don't know. But I feel like liquid cool seats are coming. <laughs> liquid cool Once we get seats. room temperature superconductors, we'll have liquid cool seats. <laughs> I feel like it's all tied together would, in some would way. This be, with fission. So, like it's all coming together. So you're the guy, <laughs> instead of an analog clock that you, you've paid. Yeah, I don't uh, want analog clocks. I want liquid cooled seats your, with room temperature superconductors. Okay, that's what I want. Liquid cooled seats. Yes. I feel like, so that's like on <laughs> so the it's a small list. ask, Lexus. So get on that. Your car is $56,000. It'd you be 110, but it would be amazing. Right. If you want the liquid cooled seats, it'll be, be an extra fifty. My butt 56. would be nice and chill. <laughs> I'd be <laughs> chilling my butt. <laughs> oh, what have we done? I would pay extra for cooled seats. It didn't you, sound like you would. Money. See, it's it's that's that's an option I'd pay ten grand for. So that's my biggest gripe about this car. Seriously, the ventilated seats that would just turn on at will because I had the AC on. I'm like, I don't want them on. Stop it. <laughs> hey, wait, did we just drive by a bakery? Okay, so we were home this weekend, and we travel a lot. And being home is on a whole weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and today is Sunday as we're recording It this. is. It's unusual to have a whole weekend home, and that means that we go out for breakfast. We do, yes. We are big out-to-breakfast people, but one of my favorite things, it's like a comfort food for me, is bagels. Yes. And now there was a time when bagels were the rage because it was all cut the fat, eat all the carbs you want. Yeah, in the 90s, I felt like bagel j- joints were like, Starbucks today, like you couldn't throw a rock without hitting a bagel. Place. Right. And there was like there were there were independent ones that were your local ones. There were right. chains like we had a Brugger's. We had yeah. an Einstein Brothers, I think it was. And I think it's because it related to the there was a low fat craze in right. the 90s and bagels are zero fat. Yeah. But it took a while for people to figure out that's you still a lot of calories. You're eating a, bagel. a lot of carbs. So they, they but became bagels. not a health food. Right. So now bagels only exist for the bagel connoisseur. <laughs> the person who really wants a bagel as a splurge or fun treat. And everybody thinks that means going to New York City. But as I have traveled out and about, I've seen some amazing bagel shops in like strange places. Yeah. One of them, one of my favorite bagel shops still though, and it runs close, it runs like neck and neck with my favorite place in New York. It's called Bagel Alley and it's a shop in Southern New Hampshire. Right here in Nashua, New Hampshire. It has been around for over 30 years. I don't even know when it was started. And around then, forever. And now there were once upon a time more locations because bagel right. craze are everywhere. Now they're down to one location. Their I, home store is still there, right? They expanded during the bagel craze, right? But then they came back to their, their roots. And here's the thing. It is the kind of place that if someone randomly said to you, you should go to Bagel Alley if you want bagels, you would drive off and be like, I'm not going in there. <laughs> right, exactly. It, it looks from the outside like- Bars on the windows. Literally. Yeah, it's like it's all locked down. And you open down. the door and it's like old 1970s wood, wood paneling. paneling. With like the, the sort of, you know, the yellow amber lighting covers yeah. they had everywhere? They still got the bulletin board on the wall, the local stuff, like business cards pinned all over it, right? half it falling down. It, 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 Pictures of babies faded from 30 years ago. Yeah, those, yeah. Those oh, yeah, yeah. babies now have babies yeah. that are older than oh, they yeah. were in those pictures. Yeah. It does have really cool little wooden cutouts on the walls that yes. are all like- like puns about bagels. Bagel puns. Bagel puns that are really cute. So like instead of a seagull, it's a bagel. But I'm bumping it's like a bagel with wings. Yeah. yeah. So it's instead of the house of seven gables, that's the house of seven bagels. bagels and they have and art. Bagels. Like the bagels are all in the haunted house yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So it has its own little vibe. But it's this tiny little hole in the wall. And to actually get it, you have to go around the back of the building. Uh, by the local post office, behind a bank, yes. uh, alongside of a church. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. And you have to follow. There's one sign. It's like Bagel Alley. And if you miss it, you miss and it. And it's all one-way street. So if one you miss it, you got to do it all again. You're doing a whole yep. lap around town. Yep. And it's cash only. Yes. So this is like, you got to really want this food. They do not make anything easy for you. And they are mobbed whenever you they go are, in. Because they are worth it. <laughs> they, you, they are always mobbed. And it has a little bit... For those of you who remember Seinfeld, it has a little bit of a soup Nazi vibe. Yeah. You walk in the door and it's like when you get to the counter, you had best know what you're going to order. Yes. There's no like, mm, I mean, they are very friendly. Oh, they're super nice. But but there are sort of like, I don't know about rules, but it's like etiquette. There's a etiquette. speediness required yes. to this. There is you a, should there is go a in, order your bagel, yeah. move along, right? Yes. So you know, have to know what you want. And the bagels are in like bins and they just, you just order what you want and they write them a little ticket and boom, boom, boom. And you get ready. They have coffee. That's half mm-hmm. a decent coffee. Solid everyone. coffee. Yeah, they have yeah. solid coffee. But the bagels are so good. They have egg sandwiches they make on the bagels. And yep. it's like, it is like a Thanksgiving sized meal worth of egg Oh yeah, the toppings, they never bacon. spare the toppings in this Mm-mm. place. Uh, yeah. What's your yeah. favorite bagel at Bagel Alley? All right, well, a few things about the bagels themselves. And then we're going to talk about the schmear situation, which is also really important to a good bagel. And- and I don't know if we've ever shared this story, but uh, we took our daughters to Bagel Alley for years, 
And one year we went to New York City and took our daughters to right in a, in a very amazing Jewish neighborhood, one of the best bagels, bagel places supposedly in New York I City. Had, it had been recommended to me by somebody. It was fantastic. But my daughters looked at me and go, eh, it's Bagel Alley. And I'm like, okay, well, Glad I don't know if that's a ding there. against these guys. It kind of just like tells you Bagel Alley is good. But anyway, so so they do the bagels correctly. They boil them after, you know, the whole thing. But uh, And they always do solid flavors. Like they don't even, they do any of the crazy chocolate chip ones and stuff no. because if you really cook a bagel the right way, some of that stuff doesn't work. Yeah. So they stick with the best. But my favorites personally, the garlic, just because they've got garlic oh all God. over it. Like it's just festooned with garlic. There is so much garlic on it that if we Chunks. get one of them and take it home, we we have to immediately take it out and put it in its own plastic Ziploc bag or it taints it's, every other bagel it's with like garlic flavor. Dice the garlic, garlic clove into little diced chunks roasted it and then stuck it onto a bagel like it was like like a little porcupine of garlic. It's really Those good. are amazing. They're good. And they're massive bagels too. They're like you put your two hands together with your fingers connecting at the tips it's and it's st- about the size of one of these and bagels. And they get they're so huge. big that sometimes the whole middle is They inflate is not. up. They're yeah. awesome. And and that one, they're everything bagels fantastic. Just think garlic but then with everything on it. Um but you know they're plain is just our daughter okay. swears by the plane. I'm, and she eats them now. Our daughter is not a little kid. No. She's in college. But she just grabs the bagel and she's like, oh. She yep. just eats it. You always say it's a raw bagel. They're all I raw. I call her They're heathen. Because like, she just grabs the bagel and bites it. Doesn't cut it like a civilized no. human. Doesn't put anything on no, it. No, just chomp. Chomps onto a bagel. But my favorite bagel, so I always mm-hmm. get a pumpernickel bagel because yeah, yeah. I like the pumpernickel. Nothing wrong with that. But what I love about this, and it, they have a little fun on St. Patrick's Day. Yes. They have pink bagels. Green. I mean, green bagels. Yes. On Valentine's Day, they have pink bagels. Yep. And then, you guys, it's August. You know, fall might as well be here. Pumpkins right around the pumpkin, corner. They have pumpkin bagels. Their pumpkin bagels are killer. You put some cream cheese on they those? They are really good. They are really good. Because it's like, it's not just like a little pumpkin flavor. It's like the pumpkin's baked in. So and think they like turn a little bit pumpkin like, bread turn into a bagel. They like turn a little pumpkin bread color. They got a little, they're not like orange, like neon orange, but they have a little but orange But you know what else issue. is awesome about Bagel Alley? And this is something that's been from the beginning too, is that when they put the cream cheese it's on the bagel, so much. they don't mess around. It's like they take a paint spatula <laughs> and they like slather it on there. So like literally when your bagel is handed to you, because what they do is they... They cut the bagel in half. They toast it if you want it toasted. Get it toasted like any normal human should. And then they smather the tree cream. So then they cut it and ha- put the top smather. back on. Smather. Then they, or schmear, I guess is the right word. Then they cut the whole thing in half. So it's like double cut. But what's cool about it is there's probably like a quarter inch to a half an inch gap between the top of the bagel and the bottom bagel. And just this just cream layer cheese. of thick, yes. you know, uh, cream cheese that is amazing. But the other p- cool part is, they make a lot of their cream cheese there, like the mix-in ones, yes. like the, the olive pimento cream cheese people. <laughs> yes, that is what you want to get. Like, I like olives. I don't like it in the oh, cream man. cheese. They do a chive one that's really good. Their classic cream cheese is great, but the olive pimento is where it's at. Okay, so you know the one place, and this wasn't where we went in New York City, but it's a place that I go to when I'm there. I have a colleague, Michael, who's an automotive journalist mm-hmm. who I adore, and he turned me on to this place, Best Bagel and Coffee. That's Ooh. the name of it. Well, that's pretty like pretty bold. best bagel and coffee. Yeah, best, they're really good. They, but they truly like they get very busy. They can mm-hmm. have a huge line out the door, so you have to know what you want. But they, they are definitely they're they're a little sharp. They're a little bit like, what do you want, lady? Yeah, get, get in, get out, we'll move get on, in, get out. Get and if line. you don't know, like there's pressure, like forget yeah. it, just don't get a coffee. I'll just take the bagel. I can't remember. Ah, panic. Coffee. But I ordered a bagel with just cream cheese, pale yeah. boring cream cheese on it, and it was like a salmon cream cheese or something, yeah. which is not what I wanted. I'm like, oh, they gave me their own cream cheese. I go back up to the counter. I'm like, hey. So this wasn't what I ordered. And I have my receipt that says that. Yeah, bacon. right. And he looks, grabs my receipt and looks at it with an angry face. And he grabs my bagel. And then he takes the bagel and takes the receipt and walks away. And I'm like, I assume I'm getting a new bagel. <laughs> and I see him walk around he whip to somebody? the man that made the bagel. Oh, my God. He whipped And him. he, like, puts the bagel down, opens it up, points at the cream cheese, oh and slaps my the receipt down. Oh, my God. Like, Did I just get someone fired? <laughs> it's a road, it, pal. Yeah, guy makes a new bagel, throws the old one away. I say, oh, my gosh. I feel like I should have just wow. eaten the one with the salmon cream cheese. Yeah. It was it was a little That scary. is a tight ship there. They are not messing around. Well, when they say if you're going to have the like a name like Best, Best bagel, bagel, you better not mess it up. You can't I, mess I, up I the guess bagel. there's room. How many strikes does the guy get? Does he have like a little I don't card? Know. Where they I don't know. It? He may, that may have been his last day for all I know. It's like the opposite of the coffee card. They it's like may, how many strikes you get. Right? You get two and you're up. They may have like handed him his check and been That's like, right. don't come back tomorrow. Nice day, you messed salmon up that cream cheese bagel. on a plain cream cheese bagel. Yes, it was a little scary. But that is my favorite place to go when I am New York City. Excellent bagels. Thanks for listening to The Road Reflected. 
To follow more of Nicole Wakeland's adventures, head on over to NicoleWakeland.com. There you'll find links to her social media from TikTok to Twitter, as well as her work across a wide range of media outlets. Until next time, keep it shiny side up. <laughs>